Hey guys, it's Liz and we're flipping things and I'm gonna do a quick update on a few things that happened after I got sued for selling something on eBay. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, I hope everyone is doing well. As you can see, I am in a hotel room. I am at Skyland Resort in Shenandoah National Park. I have been here most of the week and now I'm headed to Peaks of Otter on the Blue Ridge Parkway. I will have a vlog up about all my travels for work, but I wanted to update you guys. So I did a video on getting sued for selling something on eBay. I'll put the link up here if you wanna watch it if you haven't seen it. <laughs> It was insanity, but there was a few things that I didn't mention in the video that I should have, but I didn't really realize they were happening until later. Most importantly, there was a lot of mention in the uh, paperwork that was sent to me that mentioned freezing accounts. Now, I, of course, focused on the mention of the possibility of freezing my financial accounts, which, of course, completely panicked me. But what I didn't realize is that they also meant my eBay account. Now... This all happened in about a 48 hour period. And I had been selling around four to five items a day on eBay, pretty consistently for a couple weeks straight. And then one morning, everything just stopped. I was getting no sales. I had no offers to put out. There was literally nothing going on, which I was confused by, but it's not the first time that's happened. Sometimes I'm just rolling along on eBay and then bam, sales just stop. So I didn't think much of it. I remember for about three days, my husband is the one that takes my packages every morning to the post office for me. And so three mornings in a row, he came in and he's like, any packages today? And I'm like, no, nothing, which I was annoyed by, but I didn't really think much of it because I was focused on this lawsuit and dealing with this lawyer and everything else that was going on. Once the lawyer dismissed me from the case and sent me through the actual dismissal, there was one thing he actually wrote in the email where he told me about it that said, I've also notified eBay of your dismissal. Again, I still wasn't putting it together, but that night, he sent that in the afternoon, that night, immediately, my sales started again. Everything went back to normal. Suddenly I was back to, I think I sent three sales out the next morning. All of a sudden I had nine offers to send. And so I didn't realize it while it was happening, but eBay had definitely suspended my account. This caught me off guard because I assumed eBay would send you some sort of notification if your account had been suspended. I just figured it was some sort of, you know, sometimes your sales just drop off. I wasn't listing as much, like I made a lot of excuses, but looking back, I'm pretty positive that eBay had suspended my account and that's why I had no offers to send. That's why there was suddenly no activity in my store and that's why my sales completely stopped. Now, as soon as that dismissal came through, everything went back to normal and I started selling again, just like I was before. So I'm pretty positive that in the few days that all of that was happening with the lawsuit, I absolutely had my account suspended. This was a bit of a shock. I, I just didn't really realize that that could happen. And it was a reminder to me, and I've talked about this in past videos, about how important it really is to have multiple streams of income coming in. I think a good example of this is Chris from Daily Refinement. I will never get involved in like the YouTube drama and what happened but he only sold on eBay. And when they suspended his account, of course, he's like an insanely smart business person. So he's not gonna have an issue. He will figure this out, whether he does his own store, or he's selling on whatnot, all the different things he's doing. But if your only stream of income, oh, by the way, he has a huge YouTube channel. So there's that. If your only income is eBay and they suddenly cut that off, that's scary and terrifying. I don't know how else to put it because you've put all your eggs in one basket. I am a believer in multiple streams of income. I obviously am sort of a different story because I have a full-time job that pays me very well. And I also have my YouTube income, uh, my eBay income. Like I have income coming in from other places that if suddenly I couldn't sell on eBay anymore, I would be okay. But if you're a full-time seller and you're only selling on eBay, that is scary that something like this could happen and your entire livelihood could be taken away from you in a matter of minutes over something that you didn't really intend to happen. 
So I don't choose to sell on multiple channels just because I don't have the time. I know that there's listing services you can do that will list everywhere and pull it down if you sell on one channel. I just don't have the time to put into it and I went with the sales platform that I enjoy the most, which is eBay. That's my favorite one to sell on and so I sell on it because this is something I do in my free time when I'm not working. But if I was doing this full time, I would absolutely be selling on multiple platforms. I'd be selling on Facebook, I'd be selling on Mercari. I don't know about Poshmark because the idea that I have to like share it, I don't know, Poshmark is kind of weird to me. But there are a lot of selling platforms and if you are trying to do this full time, you should be selling on multiple ones because I obviously sold an item that I didn't know I was not allowed to sell. I got no notification from eBay, but they can literally flip a switch and stop your sales immediately. And that is a good reminder that are we running our own business? Yes. Do we own our own business? Yes. Is that contingent upon the selling platform we're using? Yes, unless you're doing some sort of online store where you're selling through your own website. So I, I just wanted to share it because I thought it was important to let you guys know that that also happened while I was going through that entire experience of being you know, sued and also just terrified that <laughs> I was gonna have to pay some sort of crazy settlement. Is $500 a crazy settlement? I guess in the grand scheme of things, no, but like to my daily life, $500 would have been a real, it would have hurt. There's no other way to put it. It would have hurt. So that is that. I wanted to update you guys and let you know about that. I am, um, I've just, you can see my suitcases back there. I just finished packing up so that I'm getting ready to drive a couple hours south um, to Peaks of Otter Lodge, which is on the Blue Ridge Parkway. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is totally disconnected, like zero service whatsoever. I'm missing one of my son's shows tonight. Well, he's, he's sitting in with someone, but I'm sad. I'm sad, I'm always sad when I miss Michael perform. But it has been a productive week, a very busy week. We're doing photo shoots. We're doing, um, I have a photographer here and we're doing room shots of a lot of the rooms here in Shenandoah National Park. And then we're going to Peaks to do the same. So it's been busy, but fun. I was a little shocked because there's no leaves here yet and it is May 11th. Today is May 11th and there are no leaves where I am here in Shenandoah National Park. Now you can see further down the mountains, there are. I guess the green, the leaves coming out moves about 100 feet up a day. So they're um, pretty far behind. I thought it would be like, you know, in Buffalo we have leaves. So I was totally shocked when I got up here and the trees don't have leaves yet. Doesn't make it any less beautiful, still absolutely gorgeous. but. Enough about that. I have to get myself going. I'm gonna go get a coffee and, you know, check some emails and do all of that before I head into peaks where I'm, I know I'm not gonna have any service. But I wanted to let you guys know that that happened because I didn't realize it was happening or I didn't put it together that my sales had been shut off by eBay until afterwards when I was able to realize what was happening with the timing. And when my, um, store just started selling again immediately upon being dismissed from this case. So I just wanted to mention it. Let me know if you sell on multiple platforms. I think a lot of you do, but if you don't, I'd love to know why. Like I'd love to know what your reasoning is. Mine is just time. I just don't have time to manage multiple selling platforms. But keep in mind, make sure that you have a backup plan if anything happens with your eBay store, especially if it is your sole source of income. Thank you all for watching. Again, my multiple streams of revenue. Thank you every one of you that watches my videos and hits like and puts a comment. Obviously it's appreciated. I try to share a little of everything, <laughs> the good, the bad, all the stuff that happens, but it is appreciated because it's like, it's just one more way for me to bring a little extra income in and help the family out. So it's appreciated if you haven't liked and subscribed and you'd like to, that would be sweet. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.